Welcome and aloha. I'm Mark Shklov, the host of ThinkTech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea program. Today we're going across the sea to Tokyo, Japan to talk with my friend, Tatsu Nakayama. Tatsu is a lawyer in Japan and the managing partner of Nakayama and Partners. He is an intellectual thinker, writer, speaker, and actor. Tatsu is listed in the 2020 edition of the best lawyers in Japan in the field of international business transactions. I've known Tatsu for many years. We are both active members of the Inter-Pacific Bar Association. We'd usually see each other every year at the annual IPBA meetings. I really believe that in-person social interaction is beneficial on many levels. However, for the last two years, we have not been able to meet because of COVID pandemic restrictions. So I want to welcome Tatsu. How are you? Good to see you. Aloha. Aloha, Mark. I'm very okay. excited and honored to be with you, my one of my closest friends in the world. I have known Mark for, 50, I think, about 15 years through the IPB, Inter-Pacific Bar Association. Mark is a great, one of the founders of this great lawyers association. I have been very honored to be with you. And now I'm excited to say something about Japan on this program. Thank you very much. You know, what, what, what really got me motivated to talk to you was a tragic event. Uh, that's the assassination of Shinzo Abe uh, on July 8th. And that, that, that shocked us here in Hawaii and around the world because it just didn't seem to be match what we know about Japan. So I've asked you, Tatsu, to you know, share your personal views and insights concerning all these recent events. And let's, let's start, start with Shinzo Abe. Uh, okay, thank you very much. Yeah. Talk, talk about that. Now, let's, there's a photo of him that we can display and put up there for a few moments to, to kind of remember. And there were a lot of concerns that this was a political act, this attack where he was killed. And that it was, attack, it was an attack on democracy and it was the beginning of more political violence. So I, I'd like you to to share your, your thoughts. Are, are these valid concerns? Thank you for your good question. I, ma I may have to apologize how aware this is not any mournful uh, attitudes anyway. I will explain this later. But uh, coming back to Shinzo Abe, it's very shocking to us Japanese as well. And uh, first impression is that as Mark said, this could be an attack to democracy. But uh, in, in a week later, we see in Japan, this is not at all related to any political issue or political attack. Uh, Mr. Yamaga, Yamagami, the accused, is believed to have very deep personal grudge against Shinzo Abe and, and some uh, religious body that is the main reason, and we see that this tragedy is not uh, any attack to democracy. This is what I see. Okay, and so that's that. I guess that's a good thing in a, in a way. I mean, it, it's it's something that was idiosyncratic or, or personal to this fellow Yamagami, uh, and it, I, I, as I understand, it had something to do with. Uh, the relationship of his mother. What what was the cause of, of that? Was that was that what it had to do? Yes, you are correct, Mr. Yamaga's Yamaga's mother, uh, who was so into uh, religious body, which is coming from Korea, the name of which is uh, Unification Church, somewhat related to Christian, which. I'm not so familiar with it. Anyway, mother was so into that unification church and she donated a lot of money, which is believed to be more than 1 million US dollars. And that made her 
bankrupt and also uh, his family, her family went so, so bad bankrupt in that way. And Yamagami's father and his brother, two of them, both of them committed suicide. Oh, they, this is very tragic. That is another reason Mr. Yamagami had a personal grudge or the, the unification church is a very evil uh, organization, that kind of something, yeah. And, and he thought that Mr. Abe was somehow connected to it, I guess, is that? Yes, correct. Uh, yeah, Mr. Abe was one of the supporters of the unification church. This is how he believed. Yeah. So what, what happens now in the justice system of Japan with this man accused of killing Mr. Abe? What would there be a trial? What what happens? Uh, there will be a trial. And uh, in Japan, about 10 years ago, we started to have a jury trial, which is uh, participated by a lay person. And uh, as far as I see, this case could be a uh, subject to a jury trial, but I'm not uh, really sure how it goes. And my, uh, my view of his uh, result of the, this uh, criminal uh, procedure could be a life sentence against Yamagami. Yeah, this is my guess. Yeah, well, we and we're we're still kind of waiting to see, I guess, what happens next in Japan. Do they do you get legal counsel appointed for you? Is that something that he would have? Will he have a lawyer? Uh, I'm not sure. At this moment, he has a lawyer, but definitely he will have because this kind of big, big case under the criminal procedure law, uh, this culprit, the accused should be, must be subject to attorney. Uh, even if he can't afford to, uh, an attorney privately by his pocket, <clears throat> uh, I would say the nationally or the, the, the Japanese bar would afford. So he would be subject to attorney. So he will get, yeah. well, that, that's similar to the United States too appointment of counsel uh, in a criminal case, you're, you, there are uh, well pro bono or lawyers that are uh, appointed. And so that sounds very similar to what we have in the United States. Now, ha has there been any uh, reaction um, against the Unification Church uh, by <clears throat> Japanese public or, or with respect to... <clears throat> What happened from the Japanese society or from Japanese government? We do not see any strong attack or strong restriction against Unification Church. Uh, partly because Unification Church has been popular in this thirty years, because thirty years ago, Japanese famous actress Miss uh, Sakurada Junko was into unification church now, that surprised the japanese society and in these 30 years we see japanese uh, many of japanese people see unification church is kind of cult kind of strange organization but it was something like this so at this moment yamagami had a person grudge against unification church but this fact doesn't change the mindset or attitude against Unification Church. Yeah. So the Japanese society seems to let that pass or let it, let it mm. be. How about with respect to his mother, the accused man's mother? How is she being treated and, and is she doing anything or is she saying anything? Uh, newspaper says she still believes in so into unification church and uh, i don't know other details yeah any strong attack or any strong restriction against her mother no information uh, has she said anything has there been any uh, comment from her no nothing particular as far okay, as so, so it's still an ongoing matter now okay. 
Um, Mr. Abe was killed while he was campaigning, uh, actually two days before the upper house election in Japan, as I understand it. Did, did his death have any uh, effect on the outcome of the upper house election? Generally speaking, I would say not big effect of this event to upper house election as expected because uh, nowadays the opposition party in Japan is not so strong, weak. We believe that LDP, LDP, Liberal Democratic Party of Japan would win. So in this sense, this tragic event made no strong impact on the election. What, was there any sort of a sympathy vote or anything like that? Uh at all, or is it is it just, you know, life is normal, uh, when life just went on? Yeah, I think uh, many voters made a sympathetic vote to LDP because uh, in the latter half of uh, Abe's regime, uh, he made some mistake or many mistakes. He was, uh, Doubted by people, uh, some kind of bribery or something, so strong, very strong connection with uh, somebody or something like this. So there was a there was a strong win against Shinzo Abe or LDP, but that win is gone in my view because of this tragic event. Because many voted for Shin, uh, Shinzo Abe or LDP made a sympathetic vote. I see. So, so they were kind of expected to do well anyway, uh, and and maybe they did a little better uh, because of the sympathy vote. Now, has the death of Mr. Abe affected Japan in any other way? Has it brought people together, or has it pushed them apart, or or neither? What has there been any type of reaction one way or the other? As far as I see. The death of Mr. Abe or the tragic event itself made uh, no distinction, made no uh, impact on the making the political people apart. However, a couple of days ago, Japanese government announced that Shinzo Abe would be mourned, would be treated as a state funeral. State funeral, the uh, funeral ceremony, uh, made and supported and run by government, which is very rare in Japan, which is rare in that this is the only second time after World War II, uh, next to the Shigeru Yoshida, uh, I think around 50 years ago. This is a, the second time, very rare, very, very big event. And uh, which announcement is opposed by opposing party? Oh, the making, uh, paying by uh, you know tax to such, such wasteful ceremony or something like this. Yeah, I see. So it has had some uh, reaction negatively, I guess, and and uh, with respect to the the state funeral, I see. Um, now, and I guess it's a little too early to see what would happen if there will be any other political changes. Um, is there any, do you have any thoughts about, I mean, would there be any changes? There was a lot of talk in America about the constitution of Japan being changed. Is there any, do you see anything right now about that or in Japan? How does that look? Any, any, any thoughts? About the constitution of Japan. Gradually, more and more people are for the amendment to the constitution. As you may know, the Japanese constitution has never changed in this 55 years or something. It was made right after the World War II, supported by the uh, JHQ General Headquarters, and uh, it has made no changes. And older generation, senior generation are for the constitution are opposing to the amendment that it, this is a very good one because of that. Thanks to that constitution, we have never had any war. However, younger generation are now 
uh, for the amendment to the constitution. It is very old. Some phrases are too old to understand something like this. And this tragic event of uh, assassination of Shinzo Abe made such gradual increase of the supporters of the amendment a bit more because many are for the still sympathetic to LEP. Yeah. And so, uh, yeah, and the amendment, I, as I understand it, talks about maybe more military spending, that type of thing. So that that's still wait and see. That may happen, but it, you kind of, have, you, you feel that there may be some leaning towards that possible change. Yeah, yeah, it could be possible, but military spending is not so much related to not only constitution, but also political or diplomatic or, uh, you know, you know, country's issues, but it's not only constitutional. Yeah. So uh, just to end our talk here about Shinzo Abe, uh, how do you think, I mean, in, in your opinion, how do you think he'll be remembered in Japan's, uh, Japan's history books? In the history book of Japan, Shinzo will be remembered as the, the prime minister with the longest term in the history. This is one good thing and a very good thing because of the reputation of Japan. You know, before Shinzo Abe, Prime Minister of Japan changes every year, Miyazawa, Kaifu, blah, blah, blah. Nobody can remember. Even Japanese can't remember who was the Prime Minister at that time, that kind of thing. This is not at all good. But Shinzo Abe maintained his uh, regime for seven, seven years or something. This is very good thing. And in this way, he will be remembered in a good way. Okay. All right. Now let's talk about some other issues that have touched the shores of both Japan and Hawaii. Uh, the COVID pandemic. I mean, where are we in Japan? Where, what is, what's happening in Japan? Uh, what's the status of life there during COVID now? Yeah. Today is... Uh, July 2022, almost two years after COVID situation, I will say in Japan, very stable. Nothing has changed. We hesitate to go around. We hesitate to go abroad. We see oh, many, many of them. No, most of them or all of them wear masks. So with the strong pressure, strong peer pressure in Japan, I will say this is very peculiar in Japan we see others and they wear masks and we wear masks. This is a typical attitude of Japan. Yeah. And, and so the status is the same. It's just every, everybody is, is just on guard, it sounds like. But what, what, what's the uh, current state of COVID infections, especially in Tokyo? And nowadays, in Tokyo or in Japan, we call it seventh wave, seventh wave. Big waves coming again in this summer. Nowadays, uh, nationally, uh, the number of uh, victims with COVID infections is uh, uh, 15,000. 15,000, mm -hmm. or it's going up to, it, it could be 20,000 in one day nationally. It is going up, upward. So in terms of uh, infections, it is going up. However, uh, many of them, or most of them, are not so serious. No, no big death is announced or something like this. Yeah, this is a situation with COVID. Okay, now, I mean, I gotta tell you that we in Hawaii all wanna go to Japan sometime, but there, there, there's a lot of entry restrictions. Uh, when, I mean, can you, do you have, is there a clear idea? I mean, there, we can't get a good, good answer. When will Japan ease the entry restrictions for foreigners so we can travel to Japan like we used to before COVID? I would say it, unfortunately, unfortunately, it will not be so soon because we Japanese or the Japanese government or the customs uh, fear is very fearful of uh, the spread 
of COVID. For example, if Hawaii people, American people, uh, people from Europe came to Japan and COVID situation, the number of infections increases, then the government would be uh, uh, subject to very harsh opposition in this sense. So I would say it could be in a year or so, Japan's entry, entry restrictions will be loosened in a year or around. I don't be so optimistic to say at the end of year, Japan will back to before COVID. It is, in my view, too optimistic. Okay. All right. Well, yeah, we'll just have to wait and see on that too. It's, these, are, these things are unpredictable. Um, now, talk, talking about other current events, um, the Russian invasion of Ukraine, uh, is, is there any common reaction in Japan to that? How does Japan feel about, about the Russia war in, J in U Ukraine? This is a very big event, which, which opened the eye of Japan in terms of country risk, as would be the case in many countries. You know, Japan is adjacent to, next to Russia. We have been subject to uh, territory issues with Russia. And that event, Russia's invasion against Ukraine made a negative view against the issues of Japan's uh, territory issues against Russia. It has been stuck in 80 years or 70 years. The four islands next to Hokkaido is invaded, in our view, invaded illegally by Russia. It has been taken away by Russia. And uh, we had many diplomatic issues, but many of us do not believe it will be solved in some good way. But this event, Russia's invasion against Ukraine, made much more negative view against our territory issues. That's very interesting. I mean, in other words, there's a, a similar issue with the Kuril Islands, yes, and Japan that Ukraine is feeling, and you, Russia's attempt Wow, 80, yeah, Russia's attempt to take over territory of another country. Um, yeah, that's a very interesting issue. I wanna, I wanna ask you now, I will get into some personal things uh, about you and <laughs> your views of Japan culture. In, in December of 2021, you published a book titled Integrity. I think we have an image of that the book cover uh, that we can put on the screen, uh, Integrity, that's your book. What, what is that a book about? This book is about integrity, the word of which is not so familiar with Japanese people. Uh, but uh, in terms of compliance, I am a lawyer, I'm a attorney, though I wear like this, but uh, one of my expertise is ad advising Japanese company about compliance, very rigid, serious issues. However, in this uh, 20 years time, Japanese view, of uh, view about compliance, too rigid, too red tape, too bureaucratic, they do not think by themselves. So I would like to change the view of Japanese people about compliance. So instead, I use the term integrity, uh, aiming that uh, to access us more leadership, to think about think about everything by themselves in, in that sense. Yeah. So uh, yeah, what I hear you saying is that compliance means oh, just maybe following uh, the appearances of, of what has been done in the past. And you're saying integrity is more doing the right thing or, or choosing to do something that is, is, is right. 
instead of just following compliance. Is, is that is that correct? Is, am I on the right track? Yeah, you are correct in understanding my intentions. For example, uh, we see something and we see something, but we have to do something. This is to do the right thing. We see something bad. We feel something um, uneasy about this in terms of compliance. We have to do some action. We have to be active or proactive. This is doing the good thing. But this uh, incentive or motivation or moving forward, moving or exercising leadership would not be led, would not be made only thinking about compliance, just comply rules, just comply rules. Instead, if we Japanese think about compliance, we, if we see something, we pretend to not to see something like this. I don't know that. I don't know that. You know, the, 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 the phrase, ignorance is bliss. We do not know that. I didn't know that. We pretend to not knowing anything. This is, I don't like this. This is not doing the right thing. You know, no, not only by compliance, the society or the company or the employees can't behave good, can't do right thing. So instead I use the term integrity in order to encourage Japanese people to do the right thing. Okay, so not just go along, but do the right thing. I hear you. And we have a similar feeling here in Hawaii too, it says, which is do the pono, do what's pono, which means do the right thing. Now, do you, with all the problems that we've been talking about, do you have any hope for the world? Yes, I do. I try to. I try to be optimistic in everything some, somebody says. To be optimistic is, uh, is intention. To be pessimistic is just a feeling, something like this. I have been optimist, optimistic, not only to the world, not on, but also in Japan itself. You know, the Japan is most aging society. The average uh, age of Japan is 48, which is coincidental exactly my age. Anyway, senior, many seniors, so elder society. However, we see many good younger generations, very active, more, more into so, uh, society issues. This is a very good thing. I think this is a case in Hawaii and the United States. So in, in that way, I've been very optimistic. And what we should do is to show how we behave, how, what is to do the right thing, or to show how happy we are. If the senior people are happy, I believe younger generation would feel something in order to be happy like that, like, like Mark, like Tatsu. So younger generation would think how they behave. Yeah. So, and also uh, I noticed on your uh, website, uh, you have a, a, one of your favorite, well, your favorite quote is to live in hearts we leave behind is not to die. And that's a quote from uh, Thomas Campbell, a Scottish poet. W why is that your favorite quote? I like that quote because my life will be completed only after I die. My reputation now in 2022, it's nothing to me. I don't care what they see me. I care, I do mind what I would be seen after I die. I like another phrase is, is this, to seek acquaint acquaintances, to seek friends in, in terms of millennia, in thousand years time, to, 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 to seek um, approval, from the peer concurrently at that time, this is just subject to peer pressure to do the right thing. 
to other society, in terms of Japan, Hawaii, United States, the world, we should see what is the right thing. And, so, and, yeah. And you're, and what I hear you saying too is, is how you are remembered. Yeah. 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 That's important. Now, one, one thing I wanted to mention and that, I mean, you look like a Hawaii lawyer. You're, you're dressed <laughs> up and, and you have a ukulele and I've seen a photo of you with yeah, yeah, also yeah. Yeah, on, on one of your websites. What is your connection with being the ukulele and looking like this? Thank you very much. This is, uh, this is not special clothes. I do wear almost daily like this, carrying ukulele. Uh, I have been wearing like this in this five years or around because I have been to United States. I've been to Singapore, many of the world. In that society, I, I noticed the difference between Japan and other countries. In Japan, you may know, Japan is homogeneous society, strong peer pressure. Then we see, only, we see others, you know, you know, less leadership. I do not like this. Instead, in Hawaii or Silicon Valley, United States, heterogeneous, you know, black, white, yellow, many diversity and with heterogeneous society, less or weaker peer pressure, then we can think freely, we can behave freely, we can do good without thinking of how they think of us or something like this. So in my life, I will have a lifetime hypothesis to change the society of Japan by wearing like this, carrying a query, wearing Hawaii shirt, and uh, to make Japan a little bit heterogeneous society. All right, well, uh, Tatsu, I wanna thank you for being my, my guest today and for sharing uh, you know, your, your personal insights, your personal opinions, your personal feelings. Uh, it's always good to talk to you. So I wanna thank you uh, and aloha. Look forward to the next time we can be together in person. Aloha, Mark. I'm very honored to be on this program. Thank you very much. See you, see you in Hawaii or in Tokyo. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.